Welcome to an out of the park 25 tutorial on game settings. This is a video that I record each year and go through how I play the game with game settings. Now, out of the park 25 is still very new as I'm recording this. So many of the game settings I'm going to tell you about is how I play in out of the park, how I played in out of the park 24 with some updates with some things that have come out, but this can certainly change as the game as as we like learn more about the game and maybe some things have been tweaked so i might change my settings as the game goes on but this is how i play this is another video that i really enjoy and appreciate when people put in the comments how they play with different settings just because there are so many different ways you can play this game with so many different settings and there's you know the Despite what some people might tell you on some internet forums, there's no right or wrong way to play. Just play the way you enjoy. I'm going to show you the way that I enjoy it. And of course, like I change some of these things sometimes. But let's get into it. We're at the uh, manager's office here and we go to game settings. Most of the settings that you're going to see are the default. I think I've tweaked a couple things off of the default. I'll try to point those out. Uh, but yeah, mo most of these are how you open a new standard game, the default settings. First thing you're going to see here is scouting. I leave pretty much all of this alone, except I only comp uh, keep one report per season from OSA. I don't really need more than that necessarily over the long haul. And I, I don't know how much smaller it makes your file size. Probably not much, but I just, I just keep that alone. And I leave everything else on, like the scouting updates, normal, scouting accuracy, normal. You know, some people will play with with scouting turned off, turning this off and just use stats. But uh, I like to use uh, the scouting system. I, I enjoy it. So these scales, I stay the same, 20 to 80. If you don't know what the 20 to 80 scale is in baseball, just, just throw it into your old web browser there and, and check it out. I think Ask Jeeves is the one that I've been recommending. And I go to, for overall and potential rating, I go to 20 to 80 increments of five. My brain just works better that way uh, with baseball. Now, I should say that there, I have seen some things from like the developers and out of the park over the last few years that basically say like, you know, the out of the park scale wasn't designed to run on 20 to 80, right? Like the player rating scale. So it's not necessarily that 50 on a 20 to 80 scale is going to be average in the game like it is in the major league. So just something to be aware of. I don't know if that makes a huge difference, like having that thought in your head when playing. And certainly, you know, I still kind of play in my head as if 50s average and you know i've still enjoyed the game and had some success at it so but just a little factoid to hold on to this show ratings over max if somebody has over an 80 at a skill it'll show you that player this has normally been turned off on default i'm going to keep it off for myself it's on this year as a sh yes but i i like the no cutoff which i think i, I think one like you know since there's no such such thing over 80 in the real life scale that's why i do it but i do know you know people in the game are better than are above this 20 to 80 scale so for me it just also just adds to the quote-unquote fog of war a little bit of just not being able to know everything about the game uh that, that kind of like how players work so it's just something i don't necessarily want to know the scale seems more realistic to me even if the uh information is not as accurate so do what you want there all player ratings are relative to Major League Baseball. That's where I keep it. Uh, I would recommend you do the same. I, I leave these two checked. The show BABIP is new this year. I think I'm going to leave it on for now. I think it still throws me off visually, but that's just because we're I'm used to. But I've got it on the coaching system. I definitely leave on. I disable. I, I leave all of these coaching things default. Uh, I disable owner goals just because I, I, I'm just trying to win, man. I'm just here to win games. I'm not here to like improve my farm system from 27th to some arbitrary number like ninth or something. I, I get the intention of it, but I'm just here to win. And by winning, I'm going to have a better farm system, but I don't, I don't need the owner grading me on, on every little detail. Uh, this is normally on, so turn that off. And this next one is normally off. This essentially means, and I covered this in my beginner's guide tutorial, that if you have a manager who uh, controls lineups and does not allow you control, allow you to control as GM or uh, does not allow you to control the hiring of certain staff, this will override that if you're a GM only. So I leave that on because I don't need any manager telling me how to live my life. This is the modern day baseball, sir. You're just out there as a figurehead to put the lineup out there that me and the analytical 
driven front office, the lineup that we want. So, sir, go ahead and step aside. I'm going to check that box. This auto save feature, you can do a lot of things here to see, uh, kind of decrease the file size of your game. How much it actually makes a difference, I don't know, but I act like it makes a difference. I auto save once a month. I know some people do once a week, daily. I definitely don't recommend doing once a year. Once a month is even like can be kind of sketchy if the game crashes on you like 20 days since your last save. That's a bummer. Box scores, I don't care about it except for anybody but me. Game recaps, don't care about them. Uh, WPA graphs, don't care about them. Game logs, nope, I don't really read them. Not worth it to me. Replays, nope. Uh, generate highlights, nope. Do I save any 3D moment, uh, movements from any league? I sure don't. Uh, now, all this should keep your game zipping along a little faster. Again, I don't know exactly how much faster. I don't know exactly how much it affects this file size, but I turn these things off just because I don't really need them anyways. It's like even if the difference was n like, you know, nil in the how, what this does to the file size, it's just not things that I need. Give me the box score for my teams. That's really all I need. Prospect rankings, yeah, I have them update annually. I just like that better. I wish, um, it, well, actually, I think they do. They update more than annually. They update, you get updates a few times. Oh, okay, annual only adjust rankings at start, midpoint, and end of season. Yeah, that's realistic to me. That's like how real life works. I don't need dynamic prospect rankings that change like all the time. I like it more like how the prospect lists come out in real life, which three times per year is pretty pretty uh, close to the norm for that. Preseason predictions, automatic. Got to have those predictions. Storylines, yeah, sure, you can leave them on. I leave these alone. Uh, let's go to players and team. But before we do that, I want to give you a quick word from the sponsor of today's video. Just give me 30 seconds and listen to the, what I have to say. Thank you. Today's episode is brought to you by the Sleeper in the Bus podcast. If you play fantasy baseball, I really recommend you check out this podcast. I'm not just saying this. I, I listen to this podcast, and it helps me with my fantasy baseball leagues. Even if you don't play fantasy baseball, it's still an entertaining listen. It's good baseball info from good baseball dudes, including this dude right here who is a good dude. So anyways, check out the Sleeper in the Bus podcast. If you have the financial means to support work that you like, look at the link in the description of this video to the Sleeper in the Bus podcast patreon page where you can get bonus perks join me in being a patron of the sleeper in the bus podcast thanks for listening let's get back to this episode so we're now in the players and team tab i leave these alone i play with injuries on uh, i leave them on normal and I, I i found that this is realistic enough for me i, I according to out of the park the high it would kind of give you more like modern day realism which is is fine and i think you can bump it up if you want but i i don't and delayed injury diagnosis occasionally that seems realistic to me sometimes you don't know if players are going to be out or for how long they're going to be out injury rating i leave that on i want to know that that's something that like basically i mean the game it, it would add to the fog of war like if if you if you checked this, but like realistically, if you're working in a front office, like you're ballparking an injury risk for a guy before you sign him. So this is just kind of how I use that ballpark. Everything else here, I leave the same. This player personality ratings on profile page, I talked about in my beginner guide and I check it. This is unchecked, but I check it so I know about the player personality on their ratings. This next one, well, there's been some issues. I'm filming this on March 28th, and I do have the new patch, but there's been some issues in the patches with player development. Uh, I think it might have to, from what I've read, it seems like it might be from players not being developed enough when they're drafted, more so than the development speed. I do generally mess with these just a little bit. I will go for batter aging speed just because I don't feel like batters develop as quickly in this as they do in real life now when you you do see hitters come up uh pr pretty young shout out gunner henderson and so i i'll put this at sometimes 1.10 the zero is obviously not really necessary or 1.05 um oh wait that's the aging speed i leave that alone sometimes i actually like to put this at 0.95 because i like the hitters to stick around a little longer um, batter development speed i will sometimes put at 1.1 and pitcher aging speed, yeah, sometimes I'll put this at like a 0 0.95 just because, again, I like guys' careers to last a little longer. 
But, you know, does this make much of a difference? I couldn't tell you. Who knows? Um, I guess it makes like 0 0.05 difference, right? Pitcher development speed, I leave alone. Development target age, aging target age, I leave alone. TCR, a big one for a lot of you guys out there. I know some people play this at like 125. Some of you animals might even go over 125. I just leave it at 100. Uh, I don't have a good reason to change it. I don't have a good reason to keep it as it is. So I just leave it at the default. Uh, player development, I don't disable that, obviously. And the development lab, here's the new development lab uh, size. And you can disable the whole lab. I'm going to leave it at the default size of six for now. I can't imagine going less than that. I might go up a little bit more, uh, uh, one or two. Oh, and you can also disable the new player development focus. But yeah, I'll leave it at six for now. I don't know why I just repeated that, but I did. Uh, I don't want to delete players who never reach the majors because I want to see some of my, my draft picks who busted out. And keep left-right splits. Uh, I kind of like to have this for all. I like to see guys coming up, like if they've had exaggerated splits coming up consistently throughout their career. Same thing with the fielding. Sometimes I like to... I, I don't think this is as important because you can kind of use scouting to get the fielding. Uh, but... Uh, I don't care about the postseason stats in the minors, and I don't care about batter versus pitcher stats. Don't I don't do anything with this. Face gen, I don't really care about face gen, to be honest. Uh, I have this set to none. Uh, created player face gen pictures on demand. So, like I just kind of like leave this. Free agent wear suits, we can check that so they're well-dressed. But yeah, I don't do, I don't do a ton here. So I think this is basically the default, but... Uh, I've never been a big face gen guy. I just keep, kind of leave it alone. If you want face gen, like there's a lot of people out there who um, can 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 direct you on how to get realistic face gen or how to use it. Where you know, uh, but I, it's just not something I really mess with. AI settings, the trades. So what are we at? I think so. I think is two above default or maybe four is. Yeah, I'll I'll pl have it at four above for now. And I'll have it right here in the middle. That's kind of where I've landed the cup last couple of versions. This used to be something where you'd crank the heart all the way up. Favorite prospects all the way up. And trading would still be a little too easy. But they've done a lot of work with the trade engine in, out of the park the last several years. And I, I found that this is a pretty decent setting. Sometimes I'll bump this up a little bit more. But for this new game, I'll just go four above neutral or the middle. So, but, you know, and if I go... If I bump it either way, it'll be to be bumped up. Trading preference, I leave it alone. You might want to go to favors prospects one, but uh, I'll leave it in the middle probably for now. I do use hard trade mode. This you you can't therefore see what the AI thinks of a trade before you submit it. You used to be able to without hard trade mode. You can see what the AI thinks of the trades before you submit the trade, and then you can hit the Make This Work Now button, and it'll just tell you what player they want to add to the trade. This makes trading a lot harder, I think. it's It takes uh, way more time <laughs> and dedication to find the trades that you want this way. So I turn that on. I don't use the reputation system. Uh, I think that was new last year, and there seemed to be some stuff that was off with it, so I just turned it off. It's probably fixed now, but... I just don't really need it. Uh, it. Not not something I enjoy playing with. Trade deadline day, time limit, I think four minutes per round is totally fine. Oh, the player evaluation AI settings. Man, oh man, oh man. This is uh, an annual debate every year. If you go search the out-of-the-park forums, there are probably 39 million threads on this. Uh, I had landed on this. So what this is, if you don't know, is basically how the a what the AI uses to evaluate players ratings, the year, the stats from the year you're in stats from the previous year and two years ago. Now, I know some people play 25, 25, 25, 25. That's that's seems to be a uh, popular one on the forums. Uh, I at one point had landed where I had it. Basically, it was 45. 30, 25, yeah. So basically, uh, it would be 55% stats, 45% ratings. I was reading a thread on the forums this year where many people said that having the ratings higher makes the game more challenging, which I'm sure has been said on those threads for the last 17 years, 25 years. But I just, I hadn't, picked up on that before and i saw it it was definitely 70 on ratings people were like do 70 on th ratings but then 
you know, where do you go from there? I don't know. I can't remember exactly what it was, but let's call it 70, 15, 10, 5. So this is kind of interesting to me. And then apply the ratings. This is interesting to me if it makes it harder to trade, which several people in the thread said this makes it harder to trade if you bump the ratings weight up. So I might actually try that to start this year. It's a little bit higher ratings weight than the default, but not a ton higher. But, uh, you know, again, this is a annual debate on the Out of the Park forums is, is what to do with this. And I've been a big 45 guy on the ratings, but let's go. Let, I might try 70 this year. Just see what happens. Lineup selection. Uh, I normally leave this alone, but let's just say, I mean, I'm more of a sabermetric guy, so maybe I should just be going with that. Maybe I'll do that from now on. Let me tell you what I do with the Almanac. I'm going to tell you what I do with it. Absolutely nothing. I don't touch that. Let me tell you what I do with the database. Absolutely nothing. I don't touch this. Okay? Thanks for listening to my big uh, Almanac and database League settings. All right. This is, you can do so many things here, right? You can schedule your fantasy draft, a free agent draft. You can edit the league schedule. You can edit the league structure. It, like, you know, this is where you could take, you could delete divisions. If you want to realign your league, which I typically like to do, this is where you can do that. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a whole lot of fun. So you can do a lot of things on this whole page. Uh, I recommend just looking through it and seeing, I mean, you can totally, you can randomize the cities, the team nicknames. You can do a lot of fun stuff here. The one thing that I generally do is edit the league structure after a year or two when I expand leagues and teams. You can do some stuff here with moving people around as well. Renaming teams. Uh, this is just kind of how the, how the league is set up. I leave all of this alone. The rules. Well, if you don't want the D, the DH and the NL, this is where you can do that. If you don't like the three batter minimum reliever rule because you love pitching changes, batter after batter after batter on a Wednesday night at, on in May when it's 11 p.m. and you're just trying to go to bed, if you're into that, hey, you can take this down to one. I keep it at three. Modified extra innings, I, I keep it how the major leagues are. And all of this is just like roster rules when the rosters expand uh you can do some things with option years here all this is pretty much set up as the actual mlb run so i don't touch it and uh I, you know if if you're gonna touch it uh go forth and prosper but i just like my league to run like the real major leagues do, do as much as possible does do Anyways, uh, I do have trading on. I play with trades. I know that might come as a shock to some of you, but I do that. Uh, I leave all of these on. I This is default off. Allow trading of injured players for seven days. I do that. I just try not to be cheesy about it, but I do allow the trading of injured players. The trading of recently drafted players, I allow to do in the next off season. I don't want to wait a full year to trade those guys if I want to, which you know doesn't happen very often. Uh, this is one change that I make that has a decent, you know, it's a decent change, decently sized change. You know what I'm trying to say? It's not a small thing. Or maybe it is. You be the judge of that. But the amateur amateur draft date, I like to have it before the rookie ball season begins. Or, you know, at least during the rookie ball season. July 11th is too late for me. Even for the guys like college guys who go straight to A, that's too late in the season. I will normally put this like in early June. So let's just say like I do it on June 1st and that's when the draft is. I leave everything else the same, but I like to have the draft earlier in the year. So my prospects have a full or nearly full minor league season uh, in rookie ball or at least, you know, more than like six weeks in a ball. So I, I adjust that back to kind of when the draft used around when the draft used to be and sometimes even a little earlier. I don't trade on. I don't turn on uh, the ability to trade draft picks. Just because I like my league to mirror the real MLB with a lot of those types of things. Financials, I leave all this alone, but you can change the baseline of salaries. You can change uh, your your media contract baseline. You can change everything here. I don't really do that. Options, you can rename your awards if you want. You know, I've actually gotten to the point where I turn off a lot of these things. I allow team location and team nickname change, but everything else, I almost always undo it when it happens. Like, and I want to be in charge of expansion if it happens. So I honestly just leave these two here 
And the rest I basically leave alone because I, I don't want it changed. Every, whenever I was like, man, why am I doing this? Like, why, why do I have this on still? I always undo it. You can change your, uh, as I said, change the award names. I generally don't. But if you want to change like Platinum Stick to Silver Slugger and Gold Glove, you know, go forth and prosper. Maybe I'll do that this year. Hall of Fame voting I don't touch. I don't touch the milestones. If you want to turn off rainouts, you can. You can also force the season to start on a certain day. You can you can have the All Star Game decide uh, home field for the World Series like it used to for those foolish several years where they did that. Uh, but yeah, you can do lots of things here. You can do the prospect game. Just um, this is where you change your playoff uh, format. Like if you if you realign your league, you're gonna want to change your playoff format because we don't care as much about TV money here in fake land. So let's make our playoffs smaller, make them more meaningful. You know what I'm saying? Anyways. Players, yeah, I make some changes here, y'all. I uh, This makes the game harder for me, so I, I change it here. I don't change anything here, but I make the max uh, international free agents available because that's the only place where we I get international free agents. I turn the scouting discoveries off because I want to have to work for my stud prospects through inter signing up an international free agency or the draft. Like, I don't want my scout just to pop up with some random guy uh, that, that just kind of, like, was auto-generated. And I know it happens for the other team, too, other teams. So I just I just turn it off. Is that a controversial take? Is that a big take? International Generate international established free agents. These are guys who will become free agents when MLB free agency begins each offseason, and they are normally in their 20s or 30s, I find that the AI doesn't value these guys high enough, and you can often get like one or two guys per offseason. Maybe not that much. You can get a guy per offseason, a guy every other offseason, who like really just like the AI, there should have been more competition for him. So I actually turn these off. Um, I suppose I could leave them on and just not sign them, but I, I don't use them. Generate players from independent leagues. Uh, I don't really remember what I do with this, to be honest. I think I'll just go with few. Let's say I'm going to play with few, and if I end up playing with more than that, you guys can be like, dude, why didn't you tell us you play with more than that? I'll be like, because I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I don't remember changing this ever, but 12 seems like a lot, so we're just going to go with four. Historical. Uh, a lot of things that I do with that tab, and this tab, and by a lot, I mean nothing. I don't touch it. Uh, I'm sure there are good reasons too, but if you'd like to tell me about those, tell me about them. Tell me in the comments. Stats and AI, this one on the right here used to be a big one for me. This basically says, like, what offensive and pitching environment do you want your league to have? And you can select any year. So if you really liked, like, the, the rabbit ball era of, like, 2020, 2021 probably was the peak, then go for it. If you want the dead, if you want dead ball era type uh, home run totals and hit totals and strikeouts, go for it. I actually don't mind the default now in Major League Baseball anymore. The The home runs have come down a bit, you know, like like it's not like, I don't know, uh, you know, Jorge Mateo is not going to hit 57 home runs this year. He might hit 55, no, uh, but he's not hitting, you know. So I, I, I kind of like the way the game is now. I used to change this back to like 2016 or so, but I'm good with the default now and I leave it alone. Uh, I leave all of this alone. I think some of this might change year to year and they try to have it match MLB. I haven't noticed anything this year on uh, these defaults that would have me changing it, but that could change as we play the game more and get more into it. Uh, I leave all of these default things alone. Uh, I sometimes have changed the hook for the starting pitcher some. Oh, it's at default. And or reliever. Very quick. I don't know if it's been on that before or not, but... Yeah, so I, I generally just leave these alone. So I hope uh, I hope that that doesn't offend anybody who insists on something else happening. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's late and I'm tired. Just just out here making bad jokes. So, anyways, that is my game settings guide. That's how I play the game. Again, let me know how you play them. And again, don't forget to check out the uh, the Sleeper in the Bus podcast and support the Patreon if you're financially able to do those sort of things join me in supporting their patreon page anyways i appreciate you guys watching i appreciate the interactions and the comments and let me know how you play the game because 
I learn new things all the time from comments on this game, and, uh, you know, that's part of the fun of this. So thanks for watching. Talk to you guys next time. Bye.